concrete homes also offer supreme protection against fire, tornadoes, and hurricanes. It would take a radically new innovation, however, to make concrete more resistant to other kinds of catastrophe, ranging from powerful earthquakes to devastating acts of terrorism. Japan, 1995, a powerful earthquake decimated the city. Hundreds of thousands of concrete buildings crumbled. Nature's wrath exposed concrete's limitations as a construction material. Earthquakes are a real nasty thing. Because here's the building sitting in the air, and here's the building, uh, here's the ground. Well, the building doesn't know that it's supposed to move with the ground, so it's sitting, and there's a shear condition that moves across, and the building's sitting there, and it cracks everything, cracks all the concrete, and cracks the steel, bends the steel and cracks the steel. Concrete structures are vulnerable not only to nature's destructive power, but also to man's. In Oklahoma City on April 23, 1995, portions of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building collapsed after a terrorist bomb attack. Two major concrete columns failed catastrophically, unable to absorb the energy exerted by the blast. 168 men, women, and children perished. By their very nature, concrete structures are heavy and inflexible, fracturing when subjected to excess pressure or stress. But that's all about to change with the introduction of bendable concrete. Innovators have been developing this revolutionary material for more than a decade. But engineers have only just begun to apply its use in impressive projects like the Mahara Bridge in Japan. The technical term for bendable concrete is engineered cementitious composites, or ECC. Dr. Victor C. Lee at the University of Michigan has been spearheading its successful development. So this is a four-point bend test, and a load is placed on the specimen, which is supported at its two ends here. Uh, what we have now here is a mortar specimen. A mortar has similar brittleness as normal concrete. Uh, we expect that as the load comes down, very suddenly, you will find that the plate fractures into two pieces. There it goes. So uh, the failure is very sudden. It, initially, it looks like nothing is happening, although the load is increasing all the time. And then when it fails, it really fails catastrophically. Uh, this is the same test as we have seen for the mortar, except that now the mortar plate is replaced by ECC plate. Under normal conditions, ECC behaves just like normal concrete, and that is good. But under excessive loading, instead of fracture failure, we have a situation where the material undergoes plastic deformation. So you can see the deformed shape very much like a metal plate. The recipe for ECC starts the same as regular concrete, mixing Portland cement and water. But then it veers off into very innovative territory. Instead of the coarse sand and coarse aggregates, we replace them with very fine powdery sand. Uh, these are very, very tiny sand particles, silica sand, um, and also includes a component called fly ash. And a very important ingredient also in the ECC material are these tiny fibers. Uh, these fibers are made, uh, this version here is polyvinyl alcohol. They are very, very small in diameter, roughly about the half the size of a human hair. Um, and they are mixed in all together with a super plasticizer. ECC was designed to be carried and mixed by the same trucks that haul conventional concrete. In the future, it promises to be a fixture at many a construction site. In 10, 20, 30 years, we will see ECC being used uh, as if it were common concrete. And you will think of it as just concrete. And then, at that time, concrete would be ductile as opposed to brittle, as is the case nowadays.